Hi Year 12, I hope you are well. Today's lesson is going to focus on problems with experiments in psychology and there are two main ones of interest so they are demand characteristics and investigator effects. Why are they problems for experiments is what we are going to discuss. We're also going to discuss how we can deal with demand characteristics and investigator effects. And we are going to apply our knowledge to two exam questions and also you're going to have a go at a quiz um, to apply your knowledge of these two concepts, including pilot studies, which we looked at before. So demand characteristics. Demand characteristics occur when a participant tries to work out the aims of the research and as a result changes their behaviour. This can distort the internal validity and results of the study in three ways. Firstly, the participants try to be helpful and intentionally alter their behaviour to demonstrate what the researcher is investigating. And this is typically known as demand characteristics. And a researcher called Orne, all the way back in 1962, he coined the term demand characteristics and describes it as instances where the cues and the expectations in a research environment determine the participant's behaviour. That is, the moment you enter into a research environment, the moment you recognise that you're participating in a study, by that very fact, your behaviour has changed, it's been altered and it's no longer genuine. Secondly, the participants may begrudge the nature of the research or the researcher and alter their behaviour to sabotage the research. And this is known as the screw you effect. And finally, participants sometimes try to present themselves in a positive light rather than producing genuine responses or behaviours. This is known as social desirability bias. So all of these um, elements of demand characteristics certainly affect the internal validity of the study. And internal validity is looking at, are we truly studying what we intended to study? And in demand characteristics, no researcher can say, "Okay, I'm truly studying the genuine behaviour of this participant if indeed they are engaging in social desirability bias or they're displaying the screw you effect or they're displaying simply demand characteristics. It means that you're not truly studying what you intended to study. You're actually studying a ingenuine um, display of human behaviour. And then for investigator effects. Investigator effects, also known as investigator bias or experimenter bias, describes anything that the investigator does intentionally or unintentionally, which has an effect on the behaviours of the participants. Investigator effects can be confounding or extraneous variables. They are confounding variables when the presence of the researcher definitely impacts the behaviour of the participants. And they are extraneous variables when the behaviour of the researcher can have an effect on the behaviour of the participants. There are different types of investigator effects. The first is non-verbal communication. So in instances like this, the researcher can communicate their feelings about what they are observing without realising that they have done so. For example, in an interview, a raised eyebrow can make the participant aware that they may have said or done something which has surprised or shocked a researcher and they may alter their response as a consequence of this thus affecting the validity of the data. And the reason it affects the validity of the data is because the participant's true or genuine behaviour has all of a sudden been suppressed because of the the behaviour of the investigator in that moment. Physical characteristics. So the appearance of the researcher and, and such physical characteristics such as their gender will influence the behaviour or the behavioural response of the participant. This means that the behaviour is a product of the situation because of the researcher and therefore may not be reliable or valid. So indeed, participants can behave differently depending on the gender or on the race of the the researcher in question. Even in terms of the relationship that they have with the researcher in question, it may alter their behaviour. A good example would be perhaps when um, students are participating in research for their teacher, hint, hint, it may, it may cause some sort of alteration in their behaviour for that very reason. Bias in the interpretation of data. So a researcher can affect the results reported from a piece of research by interpreting the data in a biased way. 
they may not realise that they are interpreting it in a different way to someone else because it feels as if their view is the correct one. The extent to which this can occur is dependent on the data collected. This would not occur if the independent variable, if the dependent variable, sorry, is something like reaction time, as this is an objective method of measurement. So just to, to dwell on that again, so bias in the interpretation of data, this is also known as confirmation bias, where you actively seek information that confirms your stance, that confirms your views. And it might be that in the case of the investigator, that when they are interpreting the research or the results, they are looking for the findings that will confirm their hypothesis and they perhaps would, you know, ignore, downplay any any findings that perhaps contradict their initial hypothesis, which is their statement um, of the, the expectations that they have for their study. So then how do we deal with some of these investigator effects that we listed in the previous slide? The first thing is researcher training. If you know that indeed your body language can have an effect on the participant's behavioural response, then it's important that investigators, researchers are trained to behave in such a way that minimises the impact that they have on participants. And it's also important that researchers try their best to reassure participants that truthfulness is desired, no matter how odd they may feel about being true or being genuine in the, the research study. That reassurance that actually it's the truth that the researchers want to hear um, could go a long way in terms of ensuring the internal validity of the study. Standardization. So this is with regards to perhaps the, the issue of, okay, the physical characteristics of the investigator have an effect on the way the participant may behave or respond. Well, the best way to go about that is to ensure that you have the exact same researcher conducting all the conditions in your in your study. And that standardization just simply minimizes any, you know, variables that you might have if you had different researchers, so if you had a white researcher for one condition and a black researcher for another condition, there might be a difference um, in the way the participants respond for that reason. Then we have peer review. So to address the issue of bias in the way that researchers interpret their findings, it's important that you get a second opinion and you get a second expert opinion, someone who is knowledgeable in the field um, that you are researching on. And we're going to look at peer review later on in research methods, but it's a very, very good way to ensure that whatever is being published um, as part of contribution to scientific knowledge has been reviewed by a significant person in the field who can say yes I can I can validate their results I can validate their findings and lastly it's important that we use a double blind method and we're going to speak a little bit more about this later on in this slide or in this powerpoint so dealing with demand characteristics and investigator effects so you have a single blind design and this single blind research method is a specific research procedure in which participants do not know the aims of the study or which conditions of the experiment they have been assigned to. This is done in order to ensure that participants don't bias the results by acting in ways they think they should which is known as demand characteristics. For example, if a participant believed they were in a group that received a sleeping drug, they may report that they are tired because they believe they should be tired since they are in the sleeping drug group. So that's when the participant is literally conforming to the expectations, the cues um, that are presented to them in the study. But if you remove that by not letting them know what condition they're in or not letting them know the aims, then you minimise the effects of demand characteristics. A double blind design. So in this situation, both the participant and the researcher are ignorant or blind to the aims or the conditions um, that participants have been allocated to. And this will make it impossible for the participant or the researcher to know if the participant is receiving the treatment, for example, in a, in a drug trial situation where they compare the effect of a, a real drug versus a placebo. 
And this is really beneficial because it prevents um, or minimizes investigator effects. So in terms of that interpreter bias, um, but it also minimizes demand characteristics for the participants if they are unaware of what condition they are part of. And then finally, experimental realism. So this is really important. It's the extent to which the experimental task seems genuine and impactful to the participants of the experiment to the point that they focus on the task and not the fact that they are being observed or assessed. And this is absolutely crucial because if you give a participant a task that is not meaningful, that seems, you know, out of place, that seems unrealistic, then certainly they're going to be more inclined to try and suss out the aims of your study. Whereas if the task that you give them is meaningful, it, ha it holds good experimental realism, then they're less inclined to focus on the fact that they're part of an experiment and they're more inclined to focus on the task at hand, which certainly minimises demand characteristics. So you can see how those three methods um, can help us to, to minimise demand characteristics and investigator effects. And also the previous slide um, provided some practical ways of dealing with both demand characteristics and investigator effects. So we're going to have a look at this exam question and this is a question that we have done before. We did this during the attachment topic so I'll quickly read the question. It says by observing interactions between the infants and their mothers in a strange situation, Mary Ainsmith was able to identify different types of attachment. Describe possible demand characteristics in this research and this question is three marks. I'm going to quickly pull up my pen. So when it says describe possible demand characteristics in this research, it's important that you understand that who's involved in the research. So you've got infants and you've got their mothers. Infants may not display demand characteristics so much just from what we've covered in terms of what demand characteristics are. They, they're not going to try, try and uncover the aims of the research. You know, neither are they going to attempt the screw you effect other than perhaps crying, but they're not going to be intentional about it. So perhaps our first statement would be infants will not display demand characteristics however mothers may display demand characteristics so you may want to specify what type of demand characteristics mothers may display so imagine you're the mother of an infant and you're in the string situation you want to be seen as a good mother and this will certainly highlight the demand characteristic of social desirability bias it may also be that as a mother you're, you're thinking okay I, I really wonder what the aims of the experiment are and I'm hoping that I can help the researcher by being you know a little bit more present for my child than usual and that in itself would be a demand characteristic and then finally, the other type of demand characteristic that we looked at was that mothers may indeed engage in the screw you effect. Perhaps they think that the whole study is a sham or they're totally against um, separation, separating themselves from their infants just for the purpose of research. So the, the mothers may sabotage the study. So have a look at the mark scheme here. It says infants would be too young to respond to demand characteristics. And one mark for a brief reference to mothers changing their behaviour or the cues in the investigation which lead to change. And there's an example here. It says, for example, the mother's behaviour may change. The mothers try to guess what the psychologist is looking at. So they may be more attentive to their babies than when they are not taking part in this research. So you can see that in my discussion of that um, particular answer, the way we would answer this question, we've covered all the points there. OK, so for this one, I want you to pause and have a go at this question. I'm not going to help you with it. Um, what I will do is read it out um, for those of you who, <laughs> who want to hear me reading it out. But I do want you to have a go at this question and we'll come back in, in two minutes. So let me quickly read it out. It says a psychologist was at a concert where someone threw a bottle onto the stage and seriously injured one of the band members. The psychologist decided to use this incident to investigate the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. 
She asked ten people who saw the bottle being thrown if they would allow her to interview them about this. A week later, she interviewed each witness separately in a quiet room and asked them the same closed questions about what they had seen. She recorded their answers. It took her two and a half hours in total to interview the ten witnesses. Investigator effects may influence this, this study. Explain how the investigation might be modified to reduce these effects. So I'll, I'll certainly suggest that you pause the video and then come back for us to go through it. The first thing that you would need to do is identify what the investigator effect might be and also provide a solution to reduce these effects. Yeah, and having a look at the mark scheme, I'm gonna have to bring my rubber out to get rid of the pen markings. So it says two marks for relevant modification that would reduce investigator effects in this study. So possible content: have an interviewer who had not witnessed the event, event, did not know the aims of the study, so that they would not be affected by their own perception of the event. And this would be what type? This will be a double blind, which is when the researcher is unaware of the aims. Use open-ended questions so that the interviewees are able to give a more detailed and accurate version of what they saw. Absolutely, and perhaps you're going to encourage truthfulness in doing so. Use a questionnaire um, or other means to collect data without face-to-face -face interaction. And this is simply because the presence of a researcher can indeed um, alter the participant's behaviour. So removing the presence of the researcher from the, the mix, from the data collection process, can also help to minimise demand characteristics and minimise investigator effects. OK, so to finish up, I need you to do the following task. On page 191, there is a bubble which is titled Other Extraneous Variables. I want you to have a read of that bubble and summarise the information there. It's on the content that we've covered previously, in fact, quite extensively on extraneous and confounding variables. So this should simply be a refresher. And then the main task is for you to complete the quiz via the link below and this quiz will cover demand characteristics, investigator effects and pilot studies and I'm going to quickly open up the quiz so that you can see what it looks like. I'm doing this on my iPad, um, you may be able to do it on your phone, you may also be able to do it on um, a laptop, of course you'll be able to do it on a laptop so let's have a look. So this is what it looks like. And you simply answer the questions on here and it should give you a final score. So this question says, which of the following would help to reduce investigator effects? I'm going to select that one. Correct. Well done. Yeah. So have a go and send me your screenshots.